Alrighty, hey Tritus, let's go. <laughs> um, hey Tritus, John Hal here. Um, and today's video, I'm just gonna give you my some thoughts that are on my mind about this whole CV uh, 19, um, and uh, and and what's going on right now, and and also some real talk about trading and things that I really, really, really have discovered over my time by trading the markets, um, and hopefully. My whole goal is to talk to you about some things that I may be seeing in the CV19 and, uh, and, and obviously when it comes to the trading stuff, my goal is to just maybe give you a different perspective in the way you look at these markets and hopefully that in turn helps you to become a much better trader. That's my whole purpose of this video. So uh, first thing I want to talk about the CV19 uh, in, uh, oh, by the way guys, I am on my way to see the the uh, my chiropractor right now, um, so um, yeah, just just making sure I'm keeping everything aligned and healthy and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, so CV19. Uh, firstly, I want to talk about the Australian government here it is absolutely just crazy. It's seventy five people have supposedly died from this thing in Australia. It's zero point zero point two two percent of people that are affected by it but we still need to keep things locked down what bullshit is that seriously what absolute bullshit is that um anyway we, we're seeing across the world you know i just saw some statistics recently that sweden i think it was i know i watched something with tony robbins recently him and Mer him and someone miranda Menor or something Mer miranda Menor. <laughs> i don't know i can't say it but yeah it's uh and I watched it, and he was talking about like Sweden. I think Sweden, I think they actually didn't do the lockdown. You know, they just and and in a matter of weeks, most of the people actually had herd immunity. Herd immunity, which, by the way, guys, herd immunity. I think that's how you say it. I didn't even realize what that actually meant until now. Herd immunity. I knew what immunity was. You know, like you're immune to something, but herd immunity. I now know what that means. So there you go. You learn something every day, you know? <laughs> don't you? Anyway, so. Um, so what what happened was, um, yeah, apparently they did they apparently they didn't shut down and their death rates like I don't know a couple of thousand people max. Anyway, um, let, let me know in the comments below is, is that exactly what happened? I just saw the statistic. I thought, wow, isn't that interesting? Um, but anyway, so yeah, just here in Australia and stuff like that, it's just absolutely just crazy. Um, anyway, the next thing I want to talk about, guys, when it comes to that, is the economic effect. The budget deficit in America right now, uh, it was close to 5% towards the end of last year. That's crazy. That's absolutely crazy. Um, and and now the budget deficit, by the end of this year, that was end, end of last year, by the end of this year, maybe it's doubled, I don't know, depending on what happens through, throughout this year and how things balance out and stuff like that. But that's absolutely crazy, the budget deficit. So, I don't know, Americans, I don't know. But here in Australia, by the way, here in Australia, I read something recently. I looked up the budget deficit for here in Australia, and we, I think 2018, I think our budget deficit was, was 29, 29 billion or something like that, which is like one, one or two percent or something like that. I don't know. But last year, the budget deficit actually went down here in Australia, which was actually quite amazing, which is quite, quite good. Um, so I saw the budget deficit actually go down and now it's actually spiked back up again, obviously what's happened recently now. But, um, yeah. Now for people here in Australia, um, you know, through what's happening right now over the next year or so, property is probably going to keep flattening out, but we're going to go through a massive property boom here again in Australia. I'm going to say that again. People say the everything bubble, Harry Dent and, and Mark Baloney and all that sort of stuff say the everything bubble and everything's overvalued. You know, blah, 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 all that sort of stuff. Yeah, things are overvalued, but when there's a supply and demand still going on, which there is right now, housing starts are low, and there's an immigration, it was, was, will be back to high again, guess what? Then, you know, property market's gonna go up, right? So based on, it's based on supply and demand. So Harry Denton, people saying, oh, everything bubble, yeah, you know what, you could be right. But, um, and and yeah, I do believe there's there's there's, there's a lot more of it. there's a lot there's a lot more of a dip this year come here in Australian property market, but um, but uh, uh, but I do see another I, I do see a boom through there. Anyway, 
Um, now I want to talk about something about um, something that I just see so important when it comes to uh, people's people's um, people's pe people's trading and the way that you trade in these markets. One of the biggest things, one of them, is there's a lot of things that goes wrong. There's there's a lot of things that uh, a lot of people do wrong in the actual individual markets um, and how they trade. But uh, what I want to talk about is um, what I want to talk about is uh, is how you are how we are thinking about your trading. Okay, I want you to think about this for a minute. How are you thinking about your trading when it comes to your risk management? See, with me and my private clients, um, I'm really, really, really big on them on, on on good risk management because I always say that if you actually trade too much of your account on any given one trade trying to make a lot of money really, really quickly, then you end up likely to do worse than if you would trade less. Let me explain here. If you had a successful trading system, right, and you're following it, that's the hard part, right, is just to following that. But if let's say you're doing that, and let's say, for example, that, that you know, you just, you know, um, you found one trade. Let's say, for example, you, you had a trading account of, let's just, let's just call it, um, you know, uh, let, let's let's just call it um, let's just call it ten thousand dollars, right? And you, and you want to start making a lot of money really really quickly. So what what you end up doing? Trader A had ten thousand dollars. Trader B had ten thousand dollars. Trader A he wanted to make really really he wanted to make money really 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 quickly. So he thought, okay, I need to put a lot of money on my a, a lot of a lot of my account on this one trade to make a lot of money really quickly. So what does he do? He gets into the trade, right? Trader A gets into the trade. Trader B though. Trader B, or no, Trader A gets into the trade, but guess what happens? The market goes up, it goes for him, he makes 20%, it comes back down to 5%, goes back up to 15%, the market then market pulls back a little bit, and the plan simply says stay in, but because he's got too much of his account on one trade, now his emotions say, oh, I can't handle this, oh, what if this is a loss, and all that sort of stuff, and now he's freaking out, and his emotions now are so wrapped up, because all his account on this one trade, that he gets out for 10% profit, he's like, whew, you know what, thank God, I got a, I got out of that for a 10% profit. But the plan said stay in, right? It was one of those trades where the plan said stay in. So that was trade A, right? He made 10%, cool, he made a thousand bucks on his account. Now, trade B, what does he do? He says, you know what? Even though this is a really good setup, I know there's a good, there, there might be a chance of this actually being a losing trade because it's part of win-loss ratio. So what ends up happening, trade B says, you know what? I'm gonna trade, um, I am going to trade, uh, 10% uh, of my account. And I know out of that 10% that the average loss is going to be, you know, 3%. So I'm risking $300 out of this $10,000 trading account on average if I do have a loss. Okay, trading options. Okay, cool. So he gets into the trade, right? And he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm cool with that, right? And he's balanced, right? He's not worried about losing money, um, you know, and um, and stuff like that. So what ends up happening? He gets into it and and he obviously goes through the same gyrations, like the market, you know, over the next two or three days, basically doesn't, doesn't do much, but goes up 15%, 20%, blah, blah, sort of stuff, right? In options, right? That can happen easily in one or two days. So anyway, so what is happening is, uh, but Trader, Trader B says, you know what? My pl the, the plan simply says, stay in. I've got to let this thing run. Anyway, a week later goes by, and he, he's, now getting out, he's now getting out of that position for a 200% return. So, what ends up happening there? So, what ends up happening there, right? So, as you can see, right, that the more, if you if you have a trade, it doesn't matter how big your trading account is, we all have this emotional boundary, right, or this emotional level that we can't go past um, in, in dollar figures, right? And so, I've always said to my private clients um, that, you know, uh, I've always said to my private clients that you need to be balanced and having where the wins are not exciting you and the losses are not hurting you. Because if you can do that, you're going to you're likely to do better by trading less of your account than trying to throw the whole lot of one. Because you're going to be so emotional. <gasps> oh, I've got to quickly, oh, quick, 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 right? And then it's it's like it's so you're likely to do a lot of mistakes, which is actually going to cause you to go backwards. So by trading less of your account, you're likely to make more in the long run. But but on the flip side, it's much better as well, right? It's it's much better on, uh, as well for the for for the loss as well too. So the example I gave you there was for a profit or trade. So if you had a pro, if you had a profit or trade, you're likely to get out really early by trading all your account. 
And if you don't trade a lot of your account, you're not likely to get it early, you're likely to stick to the plan, and therefore in that case, you actually made more money. Okay, I'm using that, using that example. So you made more money by trading less. But the flip side is you lose less as well too. So by, what I mean by that is that if you if you get into a trade, right, and sometimes you're gonna have, say, a 30% loss. Let's say instantly, boom, the next day, crap, there's a losing trade, I'm gonna get out of that now, 30% loss. You have a $10,000 trading account, you're now down 30% of your account, and you're thinking, oh shit, I've only got seven grand left. But then the person who's trading $1,000 a trade is, is, is have still got 9,700 there, maybe a little bit less with brokerage, but now he's like, you know what, I'm still good there. I've still got 90%, I've still got 96% of my account still there. And so he continues he continues on. The other person's now kicking himself and slapping himself, you know, mentally around saying, I can't believe I did this shit. I can't believe this happened. And, you know, I can't believe this, why I did this and so on and so forth, right? So the moral of this story, guys, is one thing I've always learned is that I've always made more money by having good risk on my account, always. Every time I try to load up massively on a, on a trade, it has always gone caca poo poo on me <laughs> for 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 a, for a polite for a polite thing there, um, you know. And and that's just something that I just see time and time and time again, guys. You know, um, and if you're interested in becoming a private client, um, then just then just go to getjohnshelp.com. Uh, that's get j o h n s dot com. Uh, there's an application form there. You can be able to fill it out, and um, if, you know, and we may be a good fit for each other to for you to join my coaching program. Um, so uh, the thing is, is that that's the number one thing you must do, right? So even with my private clients, I'm always telling them all the time that yes, we have a successful strategy. Yes, one of the one of the tra- one of the setups that we look for has an over ninety percent success rate. Yes, most of the trades will run on. But how are you going to manage that when you get into the position? Right, that's the key there. And once again, as I said before, is that I've, I've always traded, I've always made more money in the long run by not loading up 100% of my account, 50% of my account in one go. I've always said by keeping risk in the, by keeping risk in my mind, which means if this is a losing trade, which you know, if it's, if you follow the plan, you're going to have a losing trades, right? It's a win loss ratio. That just might be part of the loss ratio. But if you are following the plan and you're consistently doing that, I know always at the at the end of the day, I know that you are. For me personally, I have always done well, so much better by me putting on the forefront of having the risk in my mind, which simply means if this is a losing trade and say the average loss is thirty percent, um, now that's the average loss. Sometimes a ten percent loss, sometimes it's a forty percent loss, right? But the average, if the average loss is say thirty percent. Am I comfortable by having a 30% loss on my account right now? Am I comfortable with that? If I got into this trade right now and the very next day gave me a, a maximum a, a, a loss of that, am I okay with that? And if you're okay with that and it's not gonna hurt you too much, now you're in the sweet spot, right? Now you're in the sweet spot. Um, so yeah, you may get lucky by trading your whole account on one trade and guess and on, on, the, on the whole, on the whole on that and the thing goes up 50% and you just made five grand or something like that on your $10,000 trading account. But guess what's gonna happen the next time? You're gonna do the exact same thing but next time you're gonna get whacked 50% or maybe more because now you probably got into something you shouldn't have and, and you know, ego, 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 um, all that sort of stuff. Make sense? So I hope in today's video, my purpose in today's video guys is to stop you guys from trying to load up so much on one individual trade. Uh, that's never, ever, ever, ever the way to go because there's no guarantees on one individual trade. And the more that we can get into the trade with the forefront of saying, if this is a losing trade, am I still protecting myself? Now, what I mean by that is that, you know, are you are you doing whatever you can to to, to not hurt yourself, to not basically hurt yourself? You know, having a 2 or 3% loss on your account, you know, that that's good. Having a 30 or 40% loss in one trade, you have two losing trades like that, you are gone like doo-doo, right? So, anyway guys, that's it for me. Um, I hope today's video gives you a different framework of thinking about that in the markets. In the long run, you're always going to do better by having good risk um, and by protecting that. That way, you can sleep at night, it's all good to go, and uh, you're probably likely to do better. You're probably likely to make more with that good risk management position, and you're going to make less. So it's a win-win in the long run.